Welcome back to Drone Flight Planning 101. We are now moving on to section one, Drone Basics. It is a one pager, so there's not a lot to cover here, but there is some stuff to cover here. All right, so, so onto some drone basics. First thing to look at is what is a drone? A drone is understood to be an aerial vehicle or a vehicle that operates in the sky, but it is not just a vehicle that operates in the sky, all right? A drone is any vehicle that is operated without being on board said vehicle. In other words, it is any vehicle that is remote, remotely operated, okay? That is a drone. However, when you hear the word drone, most people will think of oh, a thing in the sky, and that is the truth. When you hear the word drone, you can generally expect it to be referring to an aviation vehicle. Different types of drones, we do have different types of drones. You've got your multi-rotor drones, you've got fixed wing drones, you've got helicopter drones, and you've got VTOL drones. A VTOL stands for a vertical takeoff and landing. A VTOL kind of mixes the joys of a multi-rotor and a fixed wing together. Your most common multi-rotor is a quadcopter. That means it has four rotors or four propellers, as you can see in these pictures here. However, you do get uh, you do get multi-rotors that have more than four. You get six, eight, sometimes even ten. It depends on what you're using them for and, you know, obviously the weight that it's carrying and all of that fun stuff. Then we move on to your fixed wings. Your fixed wings have separate designs. I'm not going to explain them all, but you get different sort of fixed wings, all right? You get some fixed wings where the propeller is in the front, you get some fixed wings where the propeller is in the back. And then with the VTOL, the VTOL generally will have four multi-rotors, I mean four rotors, and it will have fixed wing as well. So a VTOL literally mixes the joys of multi-rotor and the joys of a fixed wing, puts them together, it gives you versatility like you can't believe. You can fly this thing still, you can hover it, or you can fly it like a fixed wing without even using the motors. We're moving on to three, what are the uses of a drone? I used to work with someone who used to say a drone is a glorified selfie stick. And that's the truth. A drone, the main purpose of a drone is to have a camera where you normally wouldn't be able to have a camera. You can think surveying, survey surveillance surveying you can think surveying on movie sets you use drones nowadays you can use them for documentaries you use them for real estate photos you use them for security purposes literally if you can think of anything that might involve a camera being somewhere where it normally wouldn't be then you're probably going to be thinking of drone. Drones are also taking over quite a few manned aviation jobs. For example, back in the day, you would have a helicopter to do all the filming of a, um, a movie. Nowadays, you'll just get a fancy drone. We'll go up and do the same thing for less, and it'll come out really nicely. You also have things like crop spraying, crop dusting, where normally you'd have to have a plane, a dude in a plane flying over. Now you get drones, and I've seen them in actions pretty cool. Yeah, well, it's okay. <laughs> if you're into crop dusting and stuff like that, it's going to be pretty cool. Four is the importance of flight planning. The four main reasons that your flight planning is so important is firstly to be safe. Of course, we want to be safe in the skies. We don't want to cause harm to ourselves or to anyone else. The second reason is to be able to pass your DFEs and your exams. If you go to an exam and you haven't planned your flight, you don't know what you're talking about or what you're doing, the DFE will fail you. The DFE just stands for an examiner, okay? But we'll talk about abbreviations coming up. The third reason is to prevent mid-air collisions. And this is probably the most, like, extreme one because there are mid-air collisions that happen with drones and there are still mid-air collisions happening with drones. Learn your flight planning and you will be able to avoid that stuff. And fourthly, good flight planning is going to prevent you from getting in trouble with the law. All right, drone terms and abbreviations. Before we move on, there are some terms and some abbreviations that we do need to discuss quickly. I've got them listed here on the drone course structure. I don't have them on the slides. You can refer to that if you need them. The first one I've got is RPA, second is RPS, and third is RPAS. RPA, or RUPA, stands for a remotely piloted aircraft. This is the drone itself. This is my RPA. The second thing that I mentioned there was RPS. This is your remote pilot station. Your remote pilot station is the, the little setup that you've got on the ground, the little station on the ground that houses all the equipment and the things used to safely control the drone or the RPA. In the most basic RPSs, it would be me with my remote control. 
This is my RPS. And RPAS is a remote pilot aircraft system. And this is talking about both of these put together. All right, your RPAS is all encompassing of everything used in the system, whether it be the actual drone that's flying or the stuff controlling the flight. Your RPAS is the whole system put together. Then there were a couple that I already threw in just now that we're gonna actually talk about now. DFE is a designated flight examination or the designated flight examiner. Depending on the context, what are these things? DFE, the examination, is your skills test. Once you've finished your training, your practical training, you have to go and do an examination. That is the DFE, it is your practical skills test. And the DFE examiner is literally just the, the tester, the person that's going to test you at that skills test. A UAV is, it stands for an unmanned aerial vehicle. Aerial vehicle meaning that it's functioning or operating in the sky. ROV stands for remotely operated vehicle. This is a very similar thing to UAV. The only difference is that an ROV can be referring to a drone on the ground or even in water, all right? You get submarine drones, you get uh, ground drones, but they're generally not gonna be called drones. Usually those will be referred to as ROVs. Then you've got ATO. ATO stands for an Aviation Training Organization. An Aviation Training Organization is literally the fancy term for a school, all right? An aviation school. Of course, you get different types of uh, aviation schools. You get a drone school, you get manned school. They're generally called manned or unmanned schools, but normally you're just gonna refer to it as an ATO. Then you've got the CAA. CAA stands for the Civil Aviation Authority. Your CAA is a team that controls the regulations of air law within a country. CAA isn't specific to one country. You do get CAAs that are specific to countries. For example, here in South Africa, we have SACAA, which is the South African Civil Aviation Authority. But in other places, you will have a different CAA. CAAs are scattered all around the world. If you are not under CAA, you will be under FAA. And FAA stands for the Federal Aviation Administration. Then I've just got a couple terms that we need to look at. The first one is manned. manned literally means that your vehicle is is being operated with someone on board the vehicle an unmanned vehicle is when someone is operating the vehicle being separate from the vehicle they are not on board the vehicle and finally your aerodrome in layman's terms an aerodrome is a point on the ground where aircrafts take off and aircrafts land usually it's going to be licensed at least it's going to have some sort of indicator that it is an aerodrome for example there'll be a runway whether it's tar or gravel or even just dirt whatever but generally you're going to have an indication of an aerodrome if i just go outside with my drone and i take off and land that doesn't make this space an aerodrome all right an aerodrome does have parameters to it and that is that it will generally be generally have an indication that it is commonly used for takeoff and landing of aircraft. And six is how to become an officially licensed drone pilot. I did my course, my CAA course, through an ATO and I got my license. I did not do this course and get my license. This course is just going to equate to a Udemy certificate, which is worthwhile. However, completing this course is not going to be what will get you a pilot license. You're going to have to go to a school or an ATO and you're going to have to do the course that was set up by whoever is in charge of your um, your drone operations or your drone protocol for your country. So for us in SACAA, we followed the CAA standards and we follow the CAA guidelines and rules and regulations for drones. I had to learn all of that stuff before I could get a pilot license. In the next lecture, we are going to be moving into section two, which is the course introduction. I know we've had a couple introductions already, but this is going to introduce the course in detail. We're going to explain what you can expect to get from the course and how I'm going to deliver that to you.